Well, I thought maybe we could move away from the business side of running clinics and more into the horses. So um, for many, many years, even before I met you, people were talking about um, getting the horse relaxed, getting them to thinking about what they're doing, trying to work a horse through influencing what they were thinking. But it wasn't until I met you that I really got a better understanding of that because I think so many people were talking about it, but they didn't even understand what they were talking about. And it was almost, and I, I sort of dread to say this, but it was, to me it was almost lip service for some. They, they, they thought it was a great idea, but they didn't know what, how to do it. So you really started me thinking. And a lot of good horse people even work through a horse's mind and what they're thinking, but don't, can't teach that because they don't even know what they're doing. So I thought maybe you could just talk a little bit about the role of the horse's thought. I mean, people who are going to be watching this, if they've been to my page previously, they'll have heard me go on ad nauseum about it, but maybe to get it from your point of view on that. Well, the thing I think of in there that comes to mind when you're saying that is that um, how does a horse do anything? Um, you know, you, you hear a lot of people talk about that we want to get a horse to do it like he'd do it out there in the field on his own. And, and yet, why does it look so good out there in the field on his own? Is because it's a thought of his own. It's, it's a desire of his and that comes from his thoughts and so if we can get a horse to think about <clears throat> doing something get his thought lined out there he'll arrange his body and get the job done if it if it becomes a desire of his because he's thinking about it and it seems like people bypass that they're making a horse do something they're driving him into it um, getting him to flee into and that sounds a little strong to some people but flee into doing it instead of trying to get his mind to do it but if you got a horse that is <clears throat> uh, obedient then he's not making plans he's not having a lot of thoughts out there that are in the way and so people talk about having a horse's mind through the training process that they've used whatever that might be and <clears throat> they they say that they've got to his mind well if he's not thinking about how to put an effort into these other things then his mind is here at some level but does he want to be is he thinking about what he's doing or is he just being told what to do and obedient to do it and sometimes there's a fine line between those things it's even hard to see and and distinguish but to try to get him his mind present with us instead of thinking about being somewhere else. Um, the self-preservation drive in a horse um, is so strong and so it takes very little to give him reason to want to be somewhere other than in our presence. So then he's thinking out away from us somewhere. His mind really isn't here. And that to me is the biggest piece of a horse not really working with us in the way they can or, or are willing to and the, the biggest piece of the loss of relaxation attention in a horse is when their mind is someplace else they're wanting to be somewhere away from us even if they're standing still and obedient they're still thinking about how good it would be out there with their friends eating grass yeah yeah it seems to me that um there's all there's often a conflict between what a horse is wanting to do and what a human wants them to do. And we talk about giving a horse a job. And part of the, the conflict comes from, I think, is how do I help a, how do I let, help a person let go of their agenda to get a job done and focus on getting a horse to be okay so that he's okay with doing the job. Do you know what I'm saying about this conflict that happens between what we want when a horse oh, wants sure. and we butt heads? 
Sure. How, how do you help your students do that? How do you help people work, work with you do that? I'm not sure I do, no? <laughs> but I hope, I hope it comes through. But to um, help people, hopefully help them, see a little beyond. Yeah, it's where they want to go, and yet if you can help them see what the outcome is going to be if you take the time to get this right, then they seem to get a little interested in this. Mm. But if they're, if they're looking at a total result and trying to get that out of the horse, they don't see that this is going to build to that being really good, then sometimes they're not too interested. And... <clears throat> They have to let go of how soon they're going to have that. But if they're thinking about the quality of that, and you can demonstrate that doing a little of this and getting them feeling better will help that later, then it seems like they get a little bit interested. But it is hard to get them to see that connection a lot of times between the small little spots and how that's going to build to the major thing that they have in their mind one day. I see that thing about getting a horse to follow your feel that you present because they're feeling okay and they've got a level of focus that allows them to do that on you. I see that as part of what I think Ray Hunt talked about a little and others have talked about it too, about the preparation. But it, I think the trouble is a lot of people put the preparation into getting the feet to be obedient before you ask them. So they worry about, you know, if you want to take a correct canter lead, then they worry about getting the canter smoother or the trotter, trot smoother. And that's all part of it. I'm not saying that's not part of it. But they don't go beyond that sort of level of obedience of the feet and the body. And I don't know. You knew Ray a bit, and I didn't know him at all. I saw him plenty of times, but I didn't know him at all. Do you think that's what he was talking about when he really talked about preparation? Do you think he was really talking about getting a horse's mind in the right spot first? Well, from the results I saw, I, I have to believe that. And I can't answer for Ray, so yeah, I, 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 I yeah. don't know what he would say. He might say, I was the biggest idiot that he ever met. And, and, but, but it appeared that way to me, and it wasn't something talked about in the, in the way I might talk about it, but that was coming through. Yeah. And you, you, you saw a horse look for that spot, look for that opening. Well, if he's looking, he's probably thinking there. Yeah. And, and it, it came through whether it was talked about or not. Yeah. And so, so yes, I think that that's in there.